this last night invigorating in the House of Commons or were you uh, disturbed as uh, many of those MPs, particularly uh, those who've received... I mean, it's just astonishing people are receiving death threats. Um, what do you think of uh, Brendan Cox's comments that this political rhetoric can lead to a dangerous environment that makes violence more likely? I mean, somebody who knows what he speaks of. Yes, I completely, I completely understand the, uh, the concern uh, and the, front, uh, the frustration that, uh, that Brendan has expressed. I mean, I've received uh, death threats. I think a lot of members of Parliament have. Um, and this issue has created a huge amount of division and a huge amount of tension, both in the House of Commons and right across the country. This is why the Prime Minister uh, and the government is so passionate about getting this done so that we can move on and discuss the things that are the real priorities of the British people, things like the NHS and policing and schools and transport infrastructure. And whilst this issue, whilst this singular issue so dominates the political agenda, it's really, really hard to get a balanced debate on, any, on anything. Um, and that's why it's so key that we get this done as soon as we can, and that means the 31st of October, James, James, so that we can think, move on to other stuff. Yeah, and no one would argue that that's absolutely what we all need, but do you think the Prime Minister was right to respond to Paul Sheriff's comments by just saying humbug? Which, of course, the her heritage of that word is, is false news, deception, you know, uh, to, to, well, react, well, to react to something so personal, so imploring, and not to sort of take on board what she said, but literally just to, to sort of dismiss it out of hand like that. Well, Paula was, was, was obviously uh, um, upset, but the broader point is that the debate yesterday has been, I think, a distillation of the kind of friction, the kind of frustration that we're seeing right across the country. And that will not be resolved until this big issue is resolved. But the Prime Minister, could, the Prime Minister could lead on the tone situation by dialling down some of his rhetoric, some of the words that we're using, you know, some of the surrender bill traitors, loyalty, all that stuff that's coming out of the Prime Minister. So, if the Prime so Minister again, can no, tone so, some of that down... So, again, you're, you're suggesting the Prime Minister use the word traitors. Now, um, I, don't believe, I don't believe he has. And this is the point that, this is the point that, that, that I'm making, is that... What about um, the Surrender Act, then? That is, that is undoubtedly something that he's used regularly. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And the reason is, the reason is because that act hands over power. It surrenders power from the British government, oh, Mr. where it Cleverly, should be... You know, the the... Surrender oh. is a word that you use in a conflict situation. We're not at war. Why do you use something so inflammatory like Surrender Act, which suggests this is a conflict rather than a negotiation? No, no, the word surrender is used... I mean, the, the word surrender is used in all kinds of contexts. And the point being is that this act handed, at, at the most delicate point in the negotiations, all the power to the EU side of the negotiation. It surrenders power so from the UK government. So you stand by that to... as a phrase? Because yes, clearly, so look, clearly that's one of the phrases, that's one of the words that's being banded around and used that these other MPs are saying we need to stop doing that. And this is on both sides of the debate as well. It's not just coming from uh, the Tories. Absolutely, it's on both sides. But they're the words... Well, that's I think the that's phrases a really that is... important point to just make. Call yeah, it, just really call it the Ben Act or call it the anti-No Deal Act. Why call well, it the I, Surrender Act? There's a deliberate you policy know what you're there. Doing. So the point is, if we're going to be strict about this, we should call it the, um, um, the you know the, the European the European Union Withdrawal Number Two Act. But nobody knows what that means. It's not called the Ben Act. It's not formally. It's not called the Surrender Act. But the point is, and the reason why uh, we describe it as such, is because it reminds people the actual effect of the act. This was not a neutral act. That act of parliament stripped power away from the British government and handed it to the European Union at the most delicate point in our negotiations. And the really significant point of this is that we've got the government, the Prime Minister, who are trying to get this resolved so that we can move on to talk about the priorities of the British people. And there are a number of MPs who seem to want to drag this argument on for much longer than it needs to be. The more this argument drags on, the worse it will be. We want to get this resolved so that we can move on to other issues. That is what the Prime Minister and the government are okay. desperate you know, to no do. We more, want no to talk about those other things. Do you know what's so frustrating, James, is that everybody this morning will be waking up to see what happens in Parliament, to see this argument taking place, to see the outcome of that argument, that everyone both sides saying that we need to dial down this 
this rhetoric. We need to be a bit more considered. We need, as Brendan Cox said, to take a breath and think about the fact that we might be coming from different sides of the argument, but it doesn't mean we have to shout and be aggressive. And yet you're not accepting that. You've not just sat here this morning and said, do you know what? We all need to take more responsibility in, and we will be advising no, all of our MPs said, as the party no, chairman. I, I will said. be saying we need to think carefully about that. You're, you're sitting there and you're basically finding excuses to, to carry on using Surrender Act, to find excuses for why this rhetoric's being used and blaming people who are getting in the way of Brexit, not no, taking responsibility said, for it. No, what I have said is that we have to resolve this issue. This issue has been divisive for years. We have had... We have had you know, rows in families, in communities, in Parliament, in, in, you know, in pubs for years across the country because this has been a uniquely divisive issue. The, really, the best way that we can take some of the temperature out of this debate is to get this resolved. And all the time this is left unresolved, these tensions will continue to brew. And I don't think that's healthy and I don't think that's right. But. The idea that, um, that, 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 that this can be, you know, um, you know the, the, the tensions that this creates can just be ignored, I think is wrong. This has got to be resolved, and we are trying to resolve it promptly, and then we are also trying to make sure that we focus on those other priorities that people tell us about, the, the extra police officers, the increase to the starting salary of teachers, uh, hospital upgrades, transport infrastructure upgrades. We are desperate to refocus onto these things. Okay. Uh, and yet we keep being dragged back to this incredibly binary, divisive issue. The sooner well, this can get resolved, the better. Well, that was the point of the referendum, was to put an incredibly binary issue at the heart of British politics, which, of course, was your Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron's decision. What is going to happen on October the 31st, because under this Act, you cannot crash out of the EU with no deal. The Prime Minister has to go and ask for an extension. He has used the phrase, much criticised phrase, he would rather die in a ditch than ask for an extension. So, are you going to get a deal, or is he going to flout the law and will crash out anyway. So the Prime Minister has made it absolutely clear that he is seeking to get uh, a deal. And we've seen, we've seen movement. And in the statement that he made yesterday, and unfortunately, I mean, this, this, this whole debate this morning is an example of this, the really key points that he was making, that at the start of his premiership, the EU's position was that the withdrawal agreement was sacrosanct, could not be, uh, could not be uh, adjusted or amended or, or reviewed. They are now saying they're willing to look at that. At the start of his premiership, they were saying the backstop absolutely had to stay in place and that was a non-negotiable. They're now saying that they are willing to look at alternative arrangements for the Irish border. So we have seen more movement in the last few weeks than we have seen in the uh, previous uh, year or so. And the point the Prime Minister is making is that he is working incredibly hard to get a deal that hopefully we can get through the House of Commons. But he has also said that this has got to come to a conclusion. Um, he, you know, he will uh, absolutely, governments uh, respect the law and obey the law, of course we will. But he's also saying that we have got to resolve this issue, we've got to resolve it on the 31st of October. Um, because otherwise, what we will see is more delay, more uh, uh, um, friction, more, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, more disagreement, and that's not what we want. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately, we're out of time. We know that you have to get on as well, uh, James. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank that's you. the Conservative Party Chairman, James Cleverley.